Can you use MDF as your oil painting palette or no? I need to figure out a way to film with just my iPhone, a demonstration of me painting and mixing my colors all in one space because I haven't got another camera that will point to my painting palette and have it all work well and I need this to be really good and my iPhone is the best camera that I have right now so can I use an MDF board? I haven't got wood. If I use uh, a piece of glass that's painted with a gray color on the back uh, there's too much of a glare and it that doesn't work either. So what do you do? My name is Vita Evenson and I paint grease. So I went looking through my stuff and found that I have, of course, linseed oil, which is what I have used in the past. You can see over here that there is still paint that has soaked in to MDF. MDF is a pressed board. It's not hard pressed board, it's a medium pressed board. So there's plenty of space for paint to get sucked in. And once it gets sucked in, you ain't gonna get it out. So um, I need to find a solution that will uh, not suck in the oil uh, as I'm painting for this demonstration that I'm going to do. Uh, so linseed oil isn't the option. I could pour linseed oil and they could, if it soaks all the way through, maybe, maybe, but still not a good idea. And I don't wanna waste my linseed oil. So I went through my stuff and I found a retouching varnish and liquid. Will they work? Let's find out. Okay, you can see the board up close here. And I'm gonna put on the retouch varnish. Make sure my brush is clean. Just gonna wipe it off. And turpentine and paper towel. Uh, this is a Dollar Rowney Oil Mediums retouching varnish. Uh, and uh, you know, it works great for painting, I mean, on a finished painting. I just want to put it on It is sucking it in, I can tell right away. You can see the glare from the shine of this retouch varnish. Now the other option I have is your classic original liquid. I have no affiliation with either of these brands. So uh, again, it's just a matter of I just put my brush in, a clean brush. Probably don't need too much. And let's see. And let's see which one works. I kind of suspect that both of them would work. I don't see why not. They will both seal it in some way and will provide not as a permanent palette, but as something that might uh, work just fine as I'm doing the demo, which I will put here and I want to be able to paint and show exactly what I'm doing with the colors that I'm mixing and how it's all done. So let's see, we're going to let that dry and let's see what happens.
Obviously, if I were painting a serious painting and not just a quick demo, I would never do this because you'd be adding on turpentine on your brushes, which might bring up some of what is underneath. Uh, and it's just not something that I would be comfortable doing. But for a study and a real quick one at that, let's see which one works. You could use one or the other, and I think it'll be just fine. Retouch Varnish has the ability to varnish your painting, and then if you need to get back in, you can take the varnish off. So if I'm going to be using the Retouch Varnish side, I'll probably have to be really, really careful with my turpentine, make sure it's not all over my brush to wipe it off. Um, I'm not quite sure how to go about that. Liquin, on the other hand, when it dries, it's there when you use it on your painting. And yes, you can use it to, uh, to varnish your painting. A very, very thin, 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 thin layer. Uh, and it will be there, and, and which means that you cannot go back and fix uh, an area of the painting that isn't working. But in this circumstance, maybe it's a pretty good option. I don't know. Still waiting for the liquid side to, to dry. It's the lower half. I've put this clip in the little sticky stuff <laughs> to mark the um, the separation of the two and we'll just come in and see okay so um, the retouch varnish is dry you can see the line is still a little sticky so I'm not sure uh, if I should put another coat of the retouch varnish and see what happens then or maybe now I could just rub on some linseed oil on top and then that would whatever is uh, still open any pores still open in the MDF board uh, maybe it would just kind of seal that off and make a decent um, palette to paint on I think I'm gonna try that putting some linseed oil just on a paper towel. Just want to try it out and see. So you can see the glare and then here I have, I've left it. So we'll see what happens after it dries a little bit. Okay, so it's the next day and This is where I put the linseed oil on top of uh, the retouch varnish that I had put on and it's still, it has not soaked in. So that's a good sign. And down here we have the liquid, which is now dry. And I think both of them are going to work just fine. I think it's time to get the paints out and let's see if this will work. Okay, so there is a glare here. Um, I tried to get rid of it by putting some things up. I've got the camera tilted a little bit. Uh, I have to apologize for it, but I really don't know how to fix it at the moment. So, um, I'm going to put this right on top of the linseed oil. You can see it's sliding. Let's also put some here on the liquid side, which seems to be just fine. We'll see as we move along. Using a primary limited palette okay so here on the primary limited palette we have a lemon yellow a quinacridone rose and an ultramarine blue 
let's mix an orange here. We'll move it down here. See if this palette is going to work for us. For the purposes of doing a study, it should work just fine. And a purple. But I wanted to see just what happens here. Is it being sucked in to the MDF? It doesn't seem to be losing its um, Seems to be wiping off all right. I'm a bit reluctant to use turpentine on here as it is with a uh, retouch varnish and um, may pull off that varnish. So it's, it's actually looking kind of nice. I wonder what would happen if I went ahead and let's say I wanted to wipe down the palette. By adding linseed oil and not cleaning it off with, not cleaning it off with turpentine. That would also uh, help in uh, I feeding the MDF, filling in any gaps that might be happening in this fiber board. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I wonder, as we said on this part here, there is, uh, I did not put any linseed oil. And you know, what, uh, what will happen with that? Let's just add a little bit of white down in this area. Let it sit for a little bit. This one turned out a little bit darker. I'm not gonna worry about getting it exactly the same as the other. What we really wanna do is see, should we use liquid? on an MDF palette or retouch varnish. I'm kind of thinking the liquid might be a better, uh, a better version for two reasons. One is that uh, when liquid dries it seals so it's nothing's gonna get through it and because of that kind of makes everything easy you know you don't need to put linseed oil uh, if in fact it it does seal it up the way I'm thinking it will No, no, we'll see. And I put two coats of both liquid and retouch varnish. 
So let's see what happens. Will it work? Adding uh, linseed oil on here. You know, you, you don't need turpentine or a mineral spirits, anything to, uh, oh, look at that. That just comes right off. Yeah, that actually came off a lot easier. Then with the retouch varnish and oil, not a lot easier. Let's be clear. Both of them came off pretty easy, but this one just kind of wiped right up. It reminds me of those um, uh, palettes that you can buy that are like on, feels like wax paper. So um, yeah, let's go back up and see. on this part of the retouch varnish that doesn't have linseed oil on it. You know, how easily does that come off? It might all be just pretty much the same. Again, coming in with oil. That also looks like it's coming up pretty easily. Oh yeah. So in fact, you guys, That's pretty interesting. Well, that was really interesting because I kind of expected that the liquid would be the better version, but in fact, uh, the retouch varnish worked just fine. So um, for me, it's basically the same thing. One thing is for sure is that you really don't need to put linseed oil on top of it. Um, I suppose you could uh, if your paints are a little dry, maybe, if, if that's needed. I, I don't know. I, I, you can use both. In the end, in the end though, I would probably choose the liquid version just because even if I'm putting, uh, mixing uh, uh, or cleaning my brushes with turpentine and uh, maybe using a little bit of that turpentine uh, to create a wash in the beginning, I don't think it's gonna pick up and, um, and, and get through the liquid. Uh, liquid, when it dries, it's there. It, it ain't going anywhere. Uh, so I'm, I think I would probably just do a, a base of liquid, let it dry and then use it again. Uh, if I'm, uh, doing a serious painting, a big painting, not just a quick study, uh, I would just go ahead and use my regular palette, but in a pinch, this can work. And I don't think there's any any problems with it from the knowledge that I have. Of course, uh, people who are way into these things and actually studying it and doing all the chemical things on it, well, okay, they probably have uh, a more valid answer than my uh, experience here in this tiny little studio on this tiny little Greek island. But you know what? I think it's gonna be just Fine. So that was a very interesting experiment and happy that I did it. I learned a lot and you know, hey, when you have things in your studio, the supplies that you have, test them out. Use things in different ways and see uh, how they work. Not outrageously, like you're not going to put your paints in, you know, for makeup. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? So uh, when you're in a pinch and you're in a bind and you're not sure what to do, and if you're on a tiny little Greek island and you haven't got 
You can't just get in the car and drive to the hardware store or to the art store to get the things that you need. You know, you kind of have to work with what you have. So uh, go ahead and work with it. See how it works. When you understand your materials, you kind of know what to do. Like I know that liquid is a solid, it seals, it's done. You can't get back in and fix the painting underneath if you put liquid on top as a varnish. And uh, with retouch varnish, of course, you can put it on and take it back off. So there's a different play going on there. When you understand some of these very basic things about your materials, there's a lot that you can come up with. And this is an option that I think works quite well. So with that, uh, thanks for being here. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little experiment and I will see you uh, in the next video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and click that little follow button, that notification bell. That's what I meant to say, the notification bell when you want to know when I have a new video up. Uh, and with that, um, be inspired, be creative, be you.